Okay, we're in the book of Ephesians, and uh, we've been looking at chapter 6 and the armor of God. We took off the old, we put on the new, and then God says, hey, we need some armor. It's a tough world out there, and we got a tough enemy. The enemy is the devil, and he's got some wily schemes, and he's going to do everything he can to trip us up. And so he says, the first thing we need to do is put on the helmet of salvation, protect our head from his schemes. That's what we think. Then we need to put on a breastplate of righteousness. And that, of course, protects our heart and our soul. Uh, and not only our thinking from our head, but then our heart and our soul. We need to put on the girdle of truth. That is, we need to remember that the only real ultimate truth in this world is God's word. And we need to be sure we hold everything together with truth. Now, to defend ourselves against openings in the armor, we have the shield of faith that we can move around, but we can also join in with other believers and form a wall of faith against the schemes of the devil. Pray for one another and defend one another. And then we have the spirit of the sword. We have that offensive weapon where we can get in some licks of our own because even the devil can't stand against the word of God. And the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And so we have our offensive weapon to get in some licks ourselves, not only with the devil, but also knocking down liberalism, materialism, and so many things that we have in this world we can do with the sword of the spirit. We got one more piece. And it's only going to be effective if we get all of the rest of the armor on. We need to have our feet shod, our feet covered with the gospel of peace. There are, <laughs> there are several ways, when you think about it, that keep us from witnessing. Uh, we have a fear of witnessing. Uh, that is, we're afraid of being rejected. And then we have unpreparedness. That is, we don't know how to witness. We don't know where to begin to witness. So we not only have a fear, but then we don't know how to witness. And then we have time problems. We live in a fast-paced world. I've talked to two or three people in the last couple of days, uh, and one of their biggest problems were time issues. So we have fear of rejection. We have the unpreparedness of not sharing the gospel, the time to share the gospel. The time to take out and, and to share the gospel. Well, when we have the whole armor of God on and we've taken off the old and put on the new, we can take care of all of those things. First of all, we can take care of the fear by knowing that it's not us that people are rejecting. It's Christ and his good news of grace that they're rejecting. People will share cigarettes and alcohol and drugs with others unashamably, uh, but somehow we Christians are afraid to share our faith. We're afraid to be not politically correct. What a shame that we have something good to share and we don't share it. And others have things that are bad to share and they're sharing it. So we overcome the fear with the taking off the old, putting on the new, and being armed with a shield of faith the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, sharper than any two-edged sword. How about being prepared? You know, there's not a church that I've ever served or been a part of that didn't have somebody in the church who could share simple ways of sharing faith. There's, of course, the very complex ways of 16-week courses on faith and CWT, evangelism explosion, and on and on they go. But there's some simple ways of sharing our faith. The Roman road, the four spiritual laws, the three circles, one of my favorites. And so we have lots of ways. All we have to do is take just a little bit of time to learn some one of those ways. So we've taken care of the fear. We've taken care of the preparedness. Now we need to think about the time. You see, if we're fully suited up in our armor and we have the truth, and we know that we have our heads prepared with salvation. And we know that we have our hearts protected by righteousness. Then we know that we can set proper priorities on our time.
Now, let me say something very profound. It's not my original, but it's very profound nevertheless. It's those things that we want to do that get done. Let me say it again for you. It's those things that we want to do that get done. We find time for the things we want to do. Then let me say a second thing, a second profound truth. Everything is urgent. Let me say it again. Everything in life is urgent, but not everything is important. Let me say it one more time for you. Everything in life is urgent, but not everything in life is important. We got to set our priorities according to God's standards of priorities. And if we really see the priority of lost and dying world, then we have to understand that we need to share our faith. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.